Psychology of Man In language, we often meet our greatest difficulties. All the negative implications of imagination is largely a function of misunderstanding what we say to ourselves or to others. So, for instance, if we want to speak about man from the point of view of evolution, we need to realise that the word man in ordinary language does not admit of any gradation. Man is man, and that's it, but hardly does any justice to the great differences in consciousness that can be distinguished in man. The system of the fourth way identifies seven different categories of man. The first three categories that correspond with the main three centres are practically on the same level. Man number one or physical man, is a man in whom the moving or instinctive centres predominate over the intellectual and emotional. Man number two, or emotional man, is a man in whom the emotional centre predominates over the intellectual moving and instinctive. Man number three, or intellectual man, is a man in whom the intellectual centre predominates over the emotional moving and instinctive. In ordinary mechanical life, we mostly only see the first three categories of man. Each of us, or everyone we know, is either number one, number two, or number three, which stands for the three centres of gravity of the same degree of consciousness or lack of consciousness. But there are higher categories of man. As there are higher degrees of consciousness, men are not born already belonging to these higher categories. They are all born number one, number two, number three, but can reach higher categories through conscious effort based on the teaching of conscious schools. Man number four is a product of school culture and differs from man number one, number two and number three by his awareness of himself. He understands his position and has acquired some form of unity, consciousness, permanent I and will. His development and interest for the ideas of the work has already become for more important for him than interests and ideals of ordinary life. His functions and centres are more balanced according to school principles and methods. Man number five is a man who has acquired full self-consciousness and has, in addition to a further developed unity, access to one of the higher parts of emotional or intellectual centre. Therefore, he has many functions and powers than an ordinary man. That is, man number one, two and three does not possess. Man number six has acquired the fourth state of consciousness, objective consciousness. Another higher part of centres works in him so he possesses even more new faculties and powers beyond the understanding of an ordinary man. Man number seven is a man who has attained all that a man can attain. He has a permanent I and free will. He can control all the states of consciousness in himself and he already cannot lose anything he has acquired. According to another description, he is immortal within the limits of the solar system. Understanding of this division of man into seven categories is very important for the division has very many applications in all possible ways of studying human activity. It gives you a very fine instrument for the definition of manifestations which, without it, are impossible to define. Forms of religion, art, science and philosophy are all experienced at the level according to the level of man. Religion of man number one is all about forms of physical, rituals and religious fetishism. Religion of man number two is an emotional and sentimental form of religion, sometimes passing into fanaticism. Religion of man number three is theoretical and a more scholastic form of religion, full of argument about words, forms, which have become more important than anything else. The same division applies also to art, science and philosophy. The expansion of language creates more refinement in concepts and enlarges our possibility of finding answers to the question what determines our proclivity to certain traditions and modes of being. The system gives us the possibility of studying a new language which will unite categories which are, in reality, united, and divide categories of seemingly the same categories which are, in reality, different. The division of the word man into seven categories with all that follows is an example of this new language. This gives us the fourth definition of the psychology of the possible evolution of man as the psychology of language. A new language that is universal, even the few words of this language which have been explained give you the possibility of thinking and speaking with more precision than was possible in ordinary language.